Hey guys, guess what? They agree with me! <laughs> they agree with me! <laughs> oh, vindication feels so good! First there was the week. Then there was the week of slightly less big boys. The combining. Now it is the final day of the week of big boys 3. The re-beginning. I've been trying to come up with a meaning to that word switch all week, and I just couldn't. But if I don't use that retitle now, I'll never get to. It's Masterpiece Skyfire. Masterpiece is back, baby. Gone are the days of MP sucking. At least, hopefully, based on this and the Trailbreaker that I have, but have not reviewed yet. No more giant faux forming pieces. No more bad QC. No more breakages. No more unnecessarily brain-numbing, overly complicated transformations. Just really good, high-quality renditions of the characters. And boy, let me tell you that this thing is already off on the right foot by agreeing with me. Oh? Skyfire's Titan scale? Do go on. I seem to have memories myself of such a thing. Oh, what's that, dear viewer? You think I'm crazy? Oh, but you see, Takara agrees with me. Hence, they've included several minifigures illustrating the scale of our large lad here. And if we take proven relative scale into account, Skyfire here is the biggest boy in the week of big boys. I mean, Triptychon comes with a deluxe scaled character that comes up to his knee. But here, Optimus Prime only comes up to the ankle of Skyfire. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go stare at an incredibly correct person in the mirror for a few hours. My downright perverse love of the implied scale of this thing aside, let me just say that there is so much good going on here, it's kind of heartbreaking. To even get you to start to comprehend the awe-inspiring purity of this thing, let me point out. Aside from a stand and the stand adapter, which makes perfect sense, I don't think anyone would ever expect what I'm about to tell you to be applicable to those. The figure can store all of its accessories in compartments designed to hold them in both modes. You never have to put stuff away in a drawer or risk losing it. This is basically a toy with built-in pockets for all its shit. Like stuff doesn't have to go in one place for one mode and then come out and go somewhere else for another one because that space is now taken. It all can stay exactly where it is because there are literally pockets contained on the character for all its stuff. I can't even tell you what a strange, beautiful relief that is. It's a complete breath of fresh air. It's insane. And I haven't even talked about the look of this thing yet, which is fan-fucking-tastic. This thing looks so much like the character, it's kind of jaw-dropping. This definitely has legs that are too long, but it shockingly really hides them well. I think it's a mild cheat being perpetrated by the backpack, because his torso is as long as his legs, if you count the top of that as part of his height. And normally, a figure with this many large, flat surfaces may come across a bit plain. That was not a pun. But honestly, this thing really manages to avoid that with a few subtle tricks. The proportions are a little wonky, but that's just how true Skyfires be do. I can understand how that may be a little off-putting for some people, but for people like me, for whom this character was their childhood, it's like crack, because we've never gotten something this accurate before. And I don't know how much of this figure is paint, and how much of it is just significantly glossy plastic, but the whole thing just has a pleasing sheen to it. It's all just so lovely. Now I don't know why they exactly did this, but they painted the trim around the cockpit. And this is where it ended up with the one paint mishap I can find here. It's not a big deal, but I just can't fathom why they bothered. And you know, I thought that the skinny biceps thing was going to bother me a lot more than it does. I feel like making these thicker into the elbows would be the one change to this design that no one would really complain about. But at the same time, I'm not ripping my hair out at this and ranting like there's a parts forming piece being held on by a pair of wedges that are pushing it away from the figure. Watch my previous video if you don't get what I mean by that. It looks exactly like it's supposed to. It has presence. It feels big. I mean, this thing is quite massive. I, of course, would always love an even bigger Skyfire, but that's because I'm a psycho. If I had anything truly negative to say right now, it's that untabbing his left shoulder is far too easy. And look, this may be stupid, and it might not mean a lot to you, but it does mean a lot to me. I am so fucking happy that this thing doesn't have a waist. Now you may call me a stone-cold moron, but I'm so happy about that because for fucking once, this is really just a cockpit. No splits, no tricks. And I think it's really important that at least one fucking Skyfire does this, even if it murders the possibility of having a waist. Other Skyfires have also not had waists, but they also did the fake cheating splitting cockpit thing. So what's their excuse? Also, this thing is infested with gimmicks. Like I said earlier, it's just rife with pockets. And these are all fully painted on the inside so they don't look like crap. Even the landing gear doors are painted. That's luxury right there. And it's got the smoothest faction-changing gimmick I've ever handled, even if it is a parts-forming piece. Normally, it's this little thing that rotates in the chest that can be hard to get your finger at. You can also pop this over the shoulder gun holder for some hands-free firing solutions. His face is magnetized, so his battle mask just sucks onto it. Though this was a bad idea, and I wish they just made this attached like all of his other mugs. And I only figured this out while writing this script by accident, because the figure fell into me, and this part was forced open after I set it half back on the desk. But you can open his head and eat his brains. Well, maybe not that second part, but it does reveal the monitor that shows his brain's heartbeat. I don't know why his brain has one, so don't ask. And then the head sculpt is not as bad as we feared. From all the pictures, this looked absolutely awful. But in person, I can really see what they were going for, and it almost works. Depending on the lighting every now and then, I go, yeah, that seems pretty right. A lot of the times not, but sometimes, sure. 
Real talk though, these faces are so easily swapped, hopefully someone comes out with an upgrade kit that tries to be a little less haunting, like it's going to murder me in my sleep. I do have to say though, that one of the worst looking parts of this figure is the general mess around his head. So I might have gone a little insane. After the last figure, perhaps I've begun to crack. Even all the stuff about this that should suck, I'm in love with. Though, I do think that it might just be that this thing was tailor-made for me. I mean, this is doing basically everything that I've always wanted a Skyfire to do. It looks right, it's big, it's made well, it feels great, it's got gimmicks out the wazoo, it for once has the real cockpit running down the entire front, and at night it crawls into my ear and whispers to me that I'm right about the scale of Skyfire. And let me tell you, those are the best night sleeps I've ever had. This would have been little kid me's favorite toy ever. Anyways, accessories kick a lot of ass. He's got several faces that you can swap between, all of them are about the same level of creepy, and he's got the face mask that snaps on with magnets, and by snaps on, I mean limply grips on with about the strength of a single depressed ant. It'll maybe hold, so good luck not losing it if you dare try and touch this thing while he's wearing it. He's got his gun. This is about as good as any other Skyfire gun, though it doesn't have the utter balls of the Siege versions. Blast effects meant for the gun and jetpack. He's got the adapter and the stand for fun time flying. And then he's got a series of really awesome little minifigures of pretty much all my favorite Autobots from the normal cast. Optimus, Jazz, Wheeljack. These are designed to take up several places in the figure's many compartments. And they look great posts next to my boy here. They're even meant to mimic that one scene from that one time. You know the one. Otherwise, I guess Jazz is just doing a zombie walk. So this is that rare figure that I'd actually say is made more worthwhile by its accessories. I mean, this dude is actually a full-on playset on his own. And seriously, when was the last time an MP was just supposed to be fun? This is an MP that I would so far actually recommend for little children, provided that they aren't about to choke on the minifigs. Isn't that weird? Aside from the waist, posability is excellent here. I think they invented a new type of joint for the head, so it extends, has tons of up and down, as well as tons of side to side. Shoulders have this unique shrouded base joint that pulls like a 45, and then he's got this separate, more pronounced joint that when used in tandem gets the arm pretty much all the way up. Forward butterflies, basically maximum elbows. Advanced hands with mild palm action and double jointed fingers. I just wish the thumb could rotate. As I said, no waist. Legs have a special joint that allows them to kick over his head, out to the side unimpeded, and only back about a 45. Extreme knees with automated kneecaps, always cool to see. And feet with a pretty good toe up and down, and a small rocker. So that's really pretty good. He's got at least a few specialty joints, and outside of the backwards range on the legs, which, you know, oh well, everything else is above average. Or the defeat, which bounce out to being overall average. He's missing the waist, but I've gone over how much that's actually a pro to me in this specific circumstance, but I can see why that may bug you. Though it's definitely not a reason to get the fans toys over this, because they are both missing that. But damn, is this figure ever gonna stop winning? Nope, at least not during the transformation. This is one of the easier, more fun, unique, and satisfying Skyfire transformations I've ever experienced. And honestly, it's just fun and clever. And for the most part, it feels more simple than you'd expect. The most complicated part of this whole thing is the backpack, which is definitely more of an endeavor than any other Skyfire. Unlike the New Age, though, I do find it pretty easy to keep this one straight in my head. And I love the way the chest works with these big slide-in panels. Plus, the fact that the legs are basically Masterpiece Combiner warsing it up is hilarious to me. And with the end result, now that's a Skyfire right there. I have very little bad to say about this thing. Like, it's a bummer that the feet aren't really playing along too much, and the area where the cockpit meets the booster pack is really pretty messy, with the part directly under the auto badge being uniquely ugly. The wings have a tendency to mildly droop because they actually have these stoppers preventing you from extending them up as high as you might want. This little part of the backpack is a little odd looking, and the landing gear like to fold in. And that's all the bad I have to say. On the positive though silly side, this is the nicest looking set of landing gear I've ever seen on any figure. They're painted to the nines. They look like real landing gear. The overall aesthetic is dead on, even if there are some mild gaps. The underside is not a catastrophe. It holds together well. All of its old storage is still here, and now it even has a ramp under the cockpit. The cockpit is nicely interiored, as is the secondary cockpit in the booster pack. And I've said this before, and I'll say it till I die. One of the most important key features of any Skyfire alt mode is the exact shape of the nose cone. And this is nailing that. I wish this little gap wasn't back here, but otherwise this is absolutely one of the cleanest, most perfect versions of our giant boy snoot ever to be made. That is just automatic additional points to the score in my eyes. This isn't a perfect mode, but it's an excellent playable one that looks just like it's supposed to, feels good, holds together well, and will meet your jet fire needs. And the alt mode is just one more thing that makes it like this figure was designed in a lab to appeal to me specifically. Like, this is no joke, basically a dream version of Skyfire for me. It does everything I, in my psychosis, want it to. But what I can say objectively is that this is incredibly accurate, it looks good, it's high quality, it feels great in your hands, it's very poseable, it's got great accessories and fantastic gimmicks in concert with those accessories to make this figure even better, it's got a good transformation, a very solid alt mode, and it's significantly cheaper than the MP3.0 Optimus Prime. So that thing can go get fucked! 400 bucks my ass! A fantastic figure that appeals to me more than that all would actually suggest. 
and ultimately this is more than worthy of the name Masterpiece. I sincerely doubt you will be disappointed in this if you get one. Siege is still absolutely awesome too though. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.